for our second video because we had such a long amazing hiding this morning an amazing tour we're going to read a couple of special maori tales enjoy kia ora tato. for our maori myth we're reading this week i have chosen maui and other legends by peter gossage eight classic tales of aotearoa and the tale that we're reading is the classic How Maui Slowed the Sun. So let us begin. How Maui Slowed the Sun. Long ago, Te Ra, the sun, began to move quickly across the sky. The days became too short to do all the things that had to be done. People could not do much about it, but Maui thought he would try. He gathered his four brothers and said to them, Let us catch the sun and make it move more slowly. It will burn us up. It is impossible, they said. I have a plan, said Maui. If we make strong ropes of flax, we can snare the sun where it rises. The brothers still weren't very happy, but they helped Maui to cut the flax. They plaited paraharaha, flat ropes, tuamaka, square ropes, and round ropes. Maui chanted karakia as they worked to give the ropes the power they would need to hold the mighty sun. At last the ropes were ready and they set off to where the sun rose. They only travelled during the long nights as they did not want the sun to know they were coming. It was many miles to the home of the sun, but as the bush gave way to shriveled scrub and the ground grew warm underfoot, they knew that they were nearly there. Soon they reached the great pit from which the sun would rise. Help me build a wall of earth to hide behind, said Maui. Hurry, my brothers, for the sun is beginning to awake. The five quickly piled up enough clay to conceal themselves. They crouched behind it as the ground began to tremble and shake. Do not throw your ropes until I say so, hissed Maui. And when we have caught it, do not let it go. First, the fiery flames reared above the wall, but Maui kept as still as a tuatara. Then came the great whirling eyes of the sun, and Maui muttered a here, charm. When the white hot teeth came into view, Maui sprang to his feet. Now, my brothers, he shouted, and the magic ropes snaked through the air. They tangled in the sun's fiery hair and looped around its huge body. Maui leapt onto the wall, raised the magic jawbone of his grand grandfather and smashed it down with all his strength onto the head of the sun. The sun shrieked in agony, but Maui kept raining blows on its flaming face. Ah! You will kill Tamanui Tera! screamed the sun. No, said Maui, I will not kill you, but I will make you move more slowly.
When the sun was weak and tired, Maui told his brothers to loosen the ropes. The sun drifted slowly into the air and began to creep across the sky. Now that is why the days are long enough and if you look hard, you can sometimes see the magic ropes that bind the sun to the earth. For book two today of our story, Te Puka Puka Rua, we're going to read The Fish of Maui, Te Ika a Maui. Te Ika a Maui. Maui had magical powers and was much better at everything than his four foster brothers, Roto, Mua, Pae and Taha. They planned to go fishing the next day, but had not told Maui as they were jealous and did not want him to come. Early next morning, Maui hid himself in the bottom of his brother's canoe. His brothers laughed as they set off, <laughs> little knowing that Maui Nukaro, the trickster, was going with them. They paddled out beyond the breakers until they found a good place to fish, but it was not good enough for Maui Atamai, the quick-witted. He sprang from his hiding place in the bottom of the canoe, The brothers, still shocked by Maui's magical appearance, obeyed his order to paddle on. On and on they paddled. They begged Maui to stop, but he would not. As the sun began to set, the land was already out of sight. All that night, Maui paddled by the light of Marama, the moon. One by one, his brothers fell asleep. The sea miles slipped beneath the keel of the canoe as something drove Maui on and on. Morning found the brothers grumpy and surly. Maui was at last satisfied with the fishing place, but as Utu, revenge, his brothers would give him no bait. So he struck himself on the nose and smeared the magic jawbone hook with his own blood. Around and around his head he whirled the jawbone of his ancestor, out and up, it crept in a widening spiral, like a great carving in the air. Then he flung it free to plummet, like Tikawau, the shag, into the ocean. The line plunged through the depths with the speed of a tayaha. The bone struck wood and locked in the arm of a carving. Maui, on the other end of the line, did not know that his hook was snared on the teko teko of a whare rooted deep in the back of a giant being. He was not landing a fish, but fishing a land. He tugged. Urgh, he wrenched. Urgh, he heaved. He strained with every muscle in his body. At the bottom of the ocean, something began to stir. Above, Maui chanted karakia that passed down the line and into the great fish. They called on it to rise up to become light and float to the surface. But it knew the sea was its home and it began to fight. 
Maui braced himself as the sea began to churn and boil. Planting his feet firmly astride the canoe, he started to pull in the line. His terrified brothers made no move to help him and they clung to the bucking craft. The fish thrashed in fury, but his strength was not as strong as Maui's will. Power coursed through Maui and the great fish ballooned to the surface. And what a fish it was. His tail stretched away to the north and his head lay far in the south. I must get my hook, said Maui. Do not touch him while I am gone. He is smooth and flat, and I do not want him damaged. But the moment Maui was out of sight, his brothers began to hack out their share. For, after all, hadn't they helped with the paddling? The great fish writhed in agony as the paddle blades sliced into his flesh. In no time, his once smooth back was a jagged mass of valleys and ranges. The fish of Maui was now a rugged land. You may have visited Te Ika a Maui, or even be living on his back at this very moment, for he is the North Island of New Zealand. Doesn't it look like a rather battered stingray? Kia ora whanau, that's the end of the Maori Tales today. I will see you for the next daily demos and I hope you enjoyed it.